Let me ask uh, perhaps a strange question, but uh, you know, proponents of Bitcoin will say uh, things like Bitcoin fixes everything. Hmm. So why do we need Ethereum uh, versus like Bitcoin plus Lightning Network for scalability? Mm -hmm. Uh, and then using Bitcoin for with this proof of work for security. So in this kind of, um, it is perhaps sort of a strange question, but it's a high level question. Why do we need uh, another technology? Yes, it has a bunch of nice features, but like doesn't Bitcoin fix everything already? So and the thing that uh, always attracted me about Bitcoin is, you know, these values of you know decentralization, creating these open permissionless systems that anyone can participate in and that aren't just going to flop over and die if whoever created them gets bored and like you know, that are resistant to like whoever runs them breaking the rules and all of these things, right? And I think that pretty strongly that these principles are like really valid and important to much more things than just money, right? Like Bitcoin is uh, <clears throat> the blockchain for money and Ethereum is uh, built from the start as a, gen a general purpose blockchain, right? It's, you know, there is Ether, the asset on Ethereum, but then you can also make, you know, decentralized financial th things, what, what we call DeFi today. Um, you know, you can make like ENS, the decentralized domain name system, um, you can put make prediction markets on it. You can uh, make totally non-financial systems that just like keep track of whether or not some certificate was signed or whether or not some like cryptographic key got revoked. There's this big long list of like just interesting things that you could use about blockchains to do, right? Like basically, they are sort of the missing piece that. Um, where without them, the kinds of things that a decentralized computer network can do is very limited. And once you have them, you know, a lot of those limitations end up going away. Uh, and so Ethereum was like always from the beginning about that, right? It's about like, hey, this isn't just money. This is, there's so much more that you could do if you could just go ahead and make any infrastructure or you know, digital institution or DAO or whatever you want to call it, where you the kind of the base layer of the logic is just executed in this open and transparent way where everyone can see what's going on. Or, you know, if you like your zero knowledge proofs, at least everyone can see proofs that prove to you that what's going on follows the rules. Um, and you know, you don't need to like just constantly keep trusting centralized actors. And hence the smart mm, contracts exactly as, as being a sort of a core technology as part of Ethereum. Yes, exactly. Smart contracts, the uh, computer programs that are running on Ethereum, they are like the core of what makes Ethereum general purpose. Yeah. Um, so I think, like, I do think that, you know, there's a lot more that wrong with the world than just money, right? Like, I'm not one of these people who thinks that, you know, if you get rid of fiat currency and you replace it with cryptocurrency, then suddenly wars are going to go away, right? Because, like, first of all, um, you know, like, seniorage revenue is only a small portion of government revenue, right? It's like, what, 5 10%, something like that. Second of all, like, if you are the sort of, um, this is one of the things I don't even get about their philosophy. Like, let's say you're the sort of person who is a, like, an extreme and very distrusting libertarian, and you think that these governments are terrible, right? Like, we we know today that governments find a combination of, uh, you know, things like welfare and things like, you know, the military that, um, you know, goes and, like, bombs people in Afghanistan, right? And the so the question you have to ask is, like, okay, you... Um, with your new, um, you know, ma magic newfangled uh, cyber currency that takes over the world, ma take away the government's ability to, to have seniorage revenue, and so you reduce the government's revenue by ten percent. If the government is that evil, which portion of its um, expenses is it going to take that ten percent from? Is it going to stop the bombing people in Afghanistan, or is it going to cut welfare? If you think it's the first, you have a very optimistic view of the government, <laughs> right? Um, yeah. So that's. I guess my perspective on like why the whole um you know we're going to save the world and create and uh, cr create peace by like denying governments the right to stealth t taxation kind of perspective doesn't really make much sense for me. And I do think that there is real value that comes from a yeah, decentralized and open currency. Like just the fact that there is a financial infrastructure that anyone in the world can you know go ahead and use, right? Like it's. Uh, and that's something that can easily be a big boon for people, right? There's a lot of places where the uh, currency in, is much less stable than the dollar, and 
you know, these people, like, they don't, like, well, if they use Bitcoin, then their only option is to get Bitcoins, right? Which, you know, are also pretty volatile. Um, if they use Ethereum, then, you know, they can get Ether, but then they can also get stable coins, right? And you might think that, you know, oh, you're not being ideologically pure. Now you're giving them stable coins, which are mirroring dollars. And obviously dollars are going to collapse too. But the reality is that dollars are vastly more stable than the Venezuelan Bolivar. Uh, so like there are really like, meaningful and beneficial things that you can give to people by cre having a, a global and open financial system. But I think if you want to actually do that, like you have to have much more than just a currency, right? And then if you want to go beyond financial things, then, you know, you have to obviously have much more than a currency. And then, you know, you also have to act actually take scalability seriously because uh, non-financial applications, like nobody's going to pay $5 a transaction for them.